can't wait to see what illusion you've come up with for us. One of those romantic boy meets girl, boy loses girl stories. It's better than that. Good morning, good morning guys. Topic for today's video is we're gonna go over the installation of our rainwater harvesting tanks. Um, so each of the tanks is 2,500 gallons each. So it gives us a total capacity in this area of 10,000 gallons. And you'll see, I think you, you might be able to see it on the, on, the, uh, on the right side of your screen there, is that there's a culvert cistern um, that we're gonna be installing on the other side of the tiny house and that'll give us about another 1,600 gallons of capacity. So in a desert climate like this in southern Arizona, um, we do get rain. People think that it doesn't really rain here, but we do get between 11 to 12 inches of rain per year. So if you wanna do 100% rainwater harvesting, um, just for your domestic needs, or if you wanna use it for your, uh, for your plants or for your gardens, you're gonna need a lot of capacity and you're gonna need a lot of catchment surface. So with the 10,000 gallons of capacity with these tanks and the 1,600 gallons with the culvert cistern, that's gonna give us enough capacity so that we can make it through the dry season. So there's a long dry season that typically happens between um, April, May, and June, where you don't really get very much rain, if any rain at all. And then July and August is where we get a lot of our rain um, during the monsoon season. So since the rain is so sporadic, having a lot of capacity, really, really important if your goal is to do 100% um, rainwater harvesting. And for example, if that's what you're gonna be living on. So we got these tanks from a company called Southern Arizona Rain Gutters. Um, I actually spent a lot of time speaking with one of the owners and kind of designing our system and going over um, the best way of kind of implementing these tanks with, uh, with the purpose that we have in mind. So Southern Arizona Rain Gutters is a really cool company um, because you don't see a lot of companies you know, focusing their entire mission on rainwater harvesting, especially in a place here in Southern Arizona where people think that it's not really that important. But in an area like this, rainwater harvesting is even, it's vastly more important than any other area. So they have a location in Tucson and they also have one in Phoenix as well. So the price of these tanks, so getting four 2,500 gallon tanks, um, the price is definitely gonna vary on you know what area you live in and specifically what tanks are you gonna be getting because these are the Polymart tanks, so these are a little bit cheaper um, than Bushman uh, rainwater harvesting tanks. So like I said, the price of the tanks is gonna vary substantially based on your location. Um, but you're gonna be spending, for this size of setup, just for the tanks themselves, you're gonna be looking at around six to $7,000. So the two main reasons why we're doing rainwater harvesting here is one, it's way better for the environment to do rainwater harvesting, as opposed to drilling a well, which is just basically sucking up all that groundwater, just like a, just like a big straw. The other important factor is cost. So the cost to drill a well out here to about 500, about 500 to 600 feet or so is gonna run us well over $12,000. So when you include the price of the tanks with the price of the roof that I'm gonna be building, the rain roof, um, we actually come in cheaper than doing a well. And what's really nice about this setup is that there's gonna be minimal maintenance over time. A well requires electricity and maintenance, like say your pump breaks or it needs replacing. You gotta factor in all those little extra costs, plus you need to generate electricity either through solar or from connecting to the grid in order to pump that water out of the ground. This system is gonna be totally passive and it's just gonna use uh, gravity in order to fill these tanks up. But for now, let's get into the installation of these tanks. So the first thing that we had done was we had our septic guy um, dig a hole that's 20 feet by 20 feet and it's about four feet deep and throwing him a couple hundred dollars makes a uh, short work of this. It only took him a few hours to dig that out using the uh, using the backhoe where it might have taken me a few weeks to dig it out by hand. So the guys from Southern Arizona Rain Gutters made short work of getting the tanks in place. Um, it was really nice to be able to talk with them because um, all these guys, they also do rainwater harvesting at home, which is really, really good to see in a company that the employees actually um, fulfill the mission of what, uh, basically the company that they work for. So it was really nice to chat with them and get some tips um, about the best way to set this up and doing all the plumbing and all that kind of stuff. And it's always nice to be able to work with guys who have ex a lot of experience doing this because they can lead you in the right direction and it can prevent costly mistakes. So it's really good to do things right the first time 
and not have to do them again. So that's one thing that I really want to harp on in the future is to learn how to do these things the best you can. If you don't know how to do them, talk to people who know exactly what they're doing so that you can basically avoid any really, uh, really bad mistakes. All right, so as you can just see in the video, we got the, the rainwater tanks in place here. So I'll explain why they're under grade um, probably in another video, but next thing that we need to do is we need to plumb all these together and then get an inch and a quarter line uh, running into the shed over there because that's where our pump is, our well pump, and our pressure tank. So we can get some running water here soon, which would be really nice because we have a water delivery in a few days. So let's, uh, let's get started with that. So I'm starting to plumb the bottom of the tanks here. So on the bottom of each of the four uh, water tanks, there's a two inch bulkhead fitting. And so basically what I'm doing is just screwing in basically a two inch male threaded um, coupling, I guess you would say, I don't know the exact plumbing terminologies for all these parts. What I would recommend for using these threaded components is to not only use the thread tape, but also to use thread compound um, to make sure that it is really, really sealed up because I did have a very, very small leak on one of these bulkhead fittings. Um, and that's because I did use thread tape, but I think I should have used the thread compound as well. And it just makes the seal much better. So going from the two inch, I'm reducing it down to a uh, down to one inch and so from when I come out with this two inch pipe you can see I'm putting in the bushing right now and then we're going to be going down to a one inch pipe and then we're going to 90 out and then we're going to have the uh, the ball valves for each of the tanks. So for attaching the PVC together, you're using not only just a cement, but also a primer as well that you apply just before you apply the cement. So right now you can see me um, attaching the ball valves. So the ball valves will allow me to control um, which tanks are feeding basically our domestic water use because one of the tanks is gonna be used almost as a first flush. And so I'm gonna be closing off the valve on that tank specifically, and then the overflow is gonna fill up the other three tanks. But with plumbing, it's always a good idea to have more control than less control. Um, because say, for example, I wanted to empty out one of these tanks. If I, didn't have these, uh, if I didn't have these ball valves at each of the tanks, then I wouldn't be able to do that. So now you can see my plumber's butt and you can see that I'm wearing Under Armour underwear that says I will on it um, they're, and they're orange as well. So coming from each of the tanks I'm going one inch pipe and then the T right there is inch and a quarter. So we're going from we're having two one inch lines come in to an inch and a quarter and now I'm going to be running that inch and a quarter line and there is a check valve it's hard to see I didn't really show it on the video but there is a check valve on that inch and a quarter line so that there's always gonna be water in the pump and the, and the water isn't gonna travel back down through the pipe into the tanks when they get to a lower level than the actual level of the pump. So you can use a sawzall to cut the pipe. I'm going a little bit old school here and just using my hacksaw just because it actually made a bit of a cleaner cut because I didn't have a metal bit, um, metal cutting bit for, my, uh, for the sawzall. Um, so we're just running the pipe right into the shed here, um, keeping everything trenched out probably between eight to 12 inches. We don't have a lot of really bad freezing temperatures, so um, we don't have to dig it down too deep. And in the last video, I said that I wasn't gonna basically disclose the length of my penis, but this is, uh, this is a pretty accurate representation of it. So this two inch pipe here that I installed is gonna collect water from uh, basically the shed roof there and then it's gonna go and fill uh, one of the tanks, but now I'm just kind of showing you basically the finished product here of basically the plumbing job that we did. So that is the two inch pipe that's going up and that'll be filling into that tank. 
and then from basically over all the ball valves, putting a ground box there so that I can access um, those valves easily whenever I want to. One other thing that you would have noticed is that I did place blocks under the pipe basically um, right from the tanks all the way into the, uh, into the shed just so that we don't have the, uh, the pipes being bent down by the, by the weight of the soil. So it's really nice to have a neighbor who has a, uh, has a tractor and has some free time. Shoot him a few bucks and he'll come over and help you with little projects like this. So our neighbor Al has definitely been the MVP of us moving out here so far just because he's helped us out so many times. And uh, it's really nice to have such, a, such an awesome neighbor that can help you out with all this type of stuff. So while we were backfilling, I did put a respirator on because the dust from the dirt was pretty ridiculous. But this is the final product. So we got all the tanks in place, we got it all piped in, we got the dirt backfilled. So we're not gonna have any issues with any, uh, any freezing of the pipes or anything like that. And um, if you have any comments or questions about the rainwater tank installation, definitely let me know below and check out Southern Arizona rain gutters if you're in the either the Tucson or Phoenix or just Southern Arizona area and they'll be able to get you set up with a whole rainwater harvesting system if you want. Awesome, thanks so much for watching guys. Catch you on the next video. Talk to you soon. Peace.